Welcome to our video on Bond Gadgets vs. Reality. In this video, we'll be exploring some of the interesting technology depicted in the James Bond movies and taking a closer look at how realistic these gadgets really are. You might have wondered, is it really possible to make a car invisible, like Bond's Aston Martin in Die Another Day? And is it a good idea to bring along explosive toothpaste on your trip overseas? We'll be examining whether similar or identical technology exists in real life, or if there have been similar technologies in use throughout history. So if you're a fan of James Bond and want to know more about the gadgets and technology featured in the movies, be sure to stick around. In the James Bond film Thunderball, Bond uses a jetpack called the Bell Rocket Belt to escape from his enemies. The Bell Rocket Belt was a real-life prototype developed by the Bell Aerosystems Company in the 1960s. It was a small, portable device worn on the back that used hydrogen peroxide fuel to propel the user into the air for short periods of time. It was demonstrated at a number of public events and was featured in several films and television shows, including Thunderball. However, it was never mass-produced or used for military or espionage purposes and was primarily a novelty item. While the technology used in the Bell Rocket Belt has been refined over the years, jetpacks capable of sustained flight for extended periods of time are not yet a reality, and they are not yet widely available or practical for everyday use. However, there have been some experimental programs and prototypes developed that utilize jetpack technology or similar devices for specific military or rescue applications. For example, the US military has conducted research into the use of jetpacks for emergency evacuation or vertical insertion of special forces personnel. There have also been a number of private companies that have developed prototypes of jetpacks or similar devices. There are a number of ways in which military units or rescue personnel could potentially use jetpacks or similar devices in the future. For example, jetpacks could be used to insert special forces personnel into an area by allowing them to fly over obstacles and outmaneuver the enemy. Reconnaissance is another example where jetpacks could be used to quickly and covertly insert a small team of personnel into an area to gather intelligence or perform other reconnaissance tasks. Lastly, jetpacks could be used for evacuation of military personnel or by rescue teams to reach and evacuate persons from difficult or hazardous locations, such as high-rise buildings or mountain terrain. It's important to note the technology is still in the development phase and it is uncertain when or if jetpacks will be deployed for operational use by special forces or other military units. Pierce Brosnan's last role as Bond was in the 2002 movie Die Another Day. The movie initially received criticism for its use of CGI, as well as for the seemingly outlandish concept of Bond's invisible car. Maybe you've been down here too long. The ultimate in British engineering. You must be joking. As I learned from my predecessor, Bond, I never joke about my work. Aston Martin call it the vanquish, we call it the vanish. Oh, very good. Adaptive camouflage, tiny cameras on all sides project the image they see onto a light-emitting polymer skin on the opposite side. You see, to the casual eye, it's as good as invisible. Plus all the usual refinements, eject to see torpedoes, target-seeking shotguns to shoot down mobile objects. Why don't you acquaint yourself with the manual? You should be able to shoot through that in a couple of hours. Bond films have always been full of gadgets that seemed a bit out there, but some critics felt that this time the gadgets might have gone a bit too far. The concept of using tiny cameras and a light-emitting polymer skin to make a car appear invisible is fictional. But with that said, it turns out it isn't that far from reality after all. There are some prototypes for similar technology that have been tested. Producer Barbara Broccoli revealed, in an interview with Yahoo back in 2013, that the actual idea for the car came from the military and that it was in fact a technology the military was exploring at the time. 
In 2014, Land Rover revealed the Invisible Bonnet, which was a concept designed to give drivers a better view of the terrain in front of them, particularly when driving off-road, by using cameras and a heads-up display to project a live video feed of the ground underneath the car onto the windshield. The concept was demonstrated in a modified Range Rover sport vehicle, which used a combination of cameras mounted on the front of the car and a heads-up display to project a live video feed of the ground beneath the car onto the windshield. In real life, there are a number of technologies that can be used to make an object or person appear partially or fully invisible, but these technologies are typically limited in their scope and effectiveness, and are not capable of making an object as large and complex as a car appear fully invisible. Some examples of these technologies include invisibility cloaks, which are devices that are designed to make an object or person appear invisible or translucent by manipulating light waves in a way that makes the object or person appear to disappear. Adaptive camouflage and augmented reality, which could theoretically be used to make a car appear to disappear or blend in with their surroundings. So while there are technologies out there that could make a car partly invisible, the real challenge is to make it fully invisible, like in the movie, and therefore it's unlikely that we'll see real-life Aston Martins vanish anytime soon. With the Daniel Craig movies, the Bond franchise took a more realistic and gritty approach compared to the older movies, and consequently, the quirky gadgets were toned down a notch. However, we were still presented with a few memorable gadgets, such as Bond's Walter PPK with a biometric palm sensor, which only lets Bond fire the gun. While there are no mass-produced guns like this on the market, several gun manufacturers are working on replicating this technology and to make it hack-proof. It turns out, a company in Idaho has now unveiled a 9mm smart handgun that can be unlocked using a fingerprint reader and hopes to make the gun commercially available this year for $895. The concept of smart guns is described as a firearm that can detect its authorized user or something, like for example a key fob, that is normally only possessed by its authorized user. The technology used includes biometrics, like fingerprints, RFID, which uses a wearable tag on a ring or bracelet, and a pin pad embedded in the grip. The gun could even be activated by Bluetooth using a smartphone application. Such weapons could help prevent suicides and make criminals unable to fire stolen weapons. It turns out, smart guns, like the one Bond uses in Skyfall, is an even older concept than the movie. As early as in 1999, Smith & Wesson started investing in developing smart guns following the Columbine High School massacre. Gareth Glazer, co-founder of the company, Lodestar Works, was inspired not by James Bond movies, but by seeing news stories about children getting shot while playing with their parents' guns. Smart guns could prevent such tragedies. Everything for a man on holiday. Explosive alarm clock, guaranteed never to wake up anybody who uses it. Dentonite toothpaste, to be used sparingly. It's the latest in plastic explosive. I could do with some plastic. In License to Kill, Bond uses plastic explosives that are concealed as toothpaste in order to sabotage enemy equipment. While plastic explosives such as Semtex and C4 are widely used, the idea of concealing explosives as toothpaste would likely be extremely dangerous. The container would need to be able to hold the explosives securely and prevent them from accidentally igniting and blowing up the real-life bomb. But the biggest danger would in fact be to eat it by accident, since it's highly poisonous. Plastic explosives like C4 usually need a shockwave to go off, something you can create with a detonator. In fact, C4 would not even explode if it were put in a microwave, shot by a bullet, or exposed to fire. Just keep it away from children and don't pick the wrong toothpaste while you're brushing your teeth. But since C4 requires a detonator to be ignited, the other challenge with explosive toothpaste would be finding a way to initiate the explosives remotely. This could potentially be done using a timer, a remote control, or some other type of triggering mechanism but doing so would likely add complexity to the device and increase the risk of failure or accidental ignition. To conclude, 
It is theoretically possible to conceal explosives as an everyday item such as toothpaste or other personal hygiene products, although doing so would likely present some serious challenges. Wet Nelly is a fictional submarine car featured in the James Bond film The Spy Who Loved Me. It is a Lotus Esprit sports car that has been modified to transform into a submersible vehicle, allowing it to travel underwater. It is technically possible to build a car that can travel both on land and underwater, but in order for a car to be able to travel both on land and underwater, it would need to be able to withstand the high pressures of the ocean depths, be equipped with a propulsion system and other specialized equipment to navigate and communicate underwater, and be able to transition smoothly between these two environments. There have been a number of prototype amphibious vehicles developed over the years that are capable of traveling both on land and in water, but these vehicles have generally been limited to low speeds and shallow waters. Not exactly the same as James Bond's car, but in recent years, there has been one close attempt at creating a real-life amphibious Bond car. A Swiss company called Rinspeed has created the world's first diving car. It's directly inspired by the James Bond movie, and it's called the Scuba. To make a closed waterproof compartment, like in the movie, they would have had to add a lot of weight to the car, which is impractical, so it had to be an open car, and the driver and passenger would need to wear scuba gear. Apart from that, the Scuba shares a lot of the same qualities as the Wet Nelly car. So to conclude, while it's very complex to produce, it is in fact possible to create a car similar to the Wet Nelly. We hope you enjoyed diving into the world of Bond gadgets with us. In part two of this series, we'll be looking at several more interesting examples. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the link for part two. Thanks for watching and see you there.